Hey everyone. Hello, welcome to Church at Home. So glad to be here with you today. We have a beautiful service planned and we are two weeks into our new series, He Walks With Me, yep. where we are looking at all those encounters in the scriptures that the risen Christ has with people, mm. which is so good it's and been awesome. so powerful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if this is your first time tuning in, we're super glad that you're here. Yeah. We hope this service really encourages your soul. Mm. And our heart is that people find meaning and community and yeah. belonging beyond so this good. moment. Yeah. So if you're keen to connect in and meet people, there's heaps of ways you can do that. Yeah. We've got life groups here where people can gather in people's homes and do life together throughout the week. Mm. But no matter where you're located, let us know if that's something you're keen on because we do run online groups as well. Mm -hmm. And we don't want anyone to miss out. Yeah, I love my life group. Yeah, me too. You run too, don't you? Yeah, but you run a life group as well. We do. What's we your favorite on... part? Oh, we always do Honestly, it's just like the get to know you. How how's your week been? Yeah, we yeah. Go around the circle. I love that yeah. because I love hearing how people's weeks have been. Yeah, me too. I just love the intentional time together. Yeah, so they good. go to Krispy Kremes every week. Oh yeah, we do. That's so good. It's so crazy. jealous. <laughs> we don't have one near us, but oh, well. fair enough. <laughs> but we also have um, an active ministry with mm -hmm. things like Run Club and a basketball association as well. We have lots of social events throughout the year yeah. to keep you busy. So many ways to get involved. Yeah, sure. So just head to the link to connect with us or download our app to see all the events events that are coming up yep. at the moment. Do it. And something else that is really worthwhile, something close to our hearts is coming up, the Frankston Winter Shelter. Mm -hmm. Have a look. To the homeless shelter. I have been staying at the homeless shelter over the winter months. This is an amazing organisation. The staff here have been fantastic and I am now on the road to recovery thanks to their support. Being able to open up to the volunteers and share my story over a meal has helped my mental state and to get through my different issues. I know that the volunteers really care for us, giving up their time to help others less fortunate than themselves. Having a decent meal has improved my mental health. A nice shower and breakfast each morning, things that most people would think nothing of, made me feel like a human again. I am so thankful of being able to attend each night. I would walk in and feel like I was loved and wanted. Every day it made me a stronger person. I hope this keeps going in the future so there can be help for other people like me who just need a hand to get back on top of their issues. The advice that I have been given has been excellent. Just having a place to be, a roof over our heads out of the cold, a couple of decent meals and making some new friends makes a massive difference in people's lives. So amazing. It's the Churches of Frankston getting together to provide a crisis shelter mm -hmm. and community for people experiencing homelessness, yeah. people sleeping rough in the colder months, and you know, it takes a huge team to make this happen. So if you can see yourself helping set up, pack down, making beds, mm -hmm. playing games with guests, you know, we need people of all sorts to help out with all sorts of shifts. So mm -hmm. head to the link and sign up for the training day on Saturday, the 20th of April. Yeah, it's just such an important ministry. Mm -hmm. This is what really matters. Clothing the needy, feeding the poor, housing the homeless. So what an amazing thing to be mm -hmm. a part of. It's making a real difference to this community. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And hey, how can we pray for you this week, church? Mm. You know, we love journeying together, doing life together. Yeah. And a great way to do this is by holding each other up in prayer. Mm. So we've got a prayer team that faithfully and confidentially prays over yeah. every single request. So let us know. We'd love to support you in that way. Yeah, so good. Mm. And thank you to everyone who gives financially to this church week mm. in, week out. I know many of you have set up recurring giving online. And it makes such a massive difference and enables us to provide crisis shelter for people in our community. Yeah, for sure. So thank you so much. If you'd like to start giving today, you can do that via the details that are provided. Yeah, the best. Well, this morning is our second week of He Walks With Me mm -hmm. and none other than, other than Jacob is bringing the word. Whoop, whoop. So exciting. He is sharing on Peter's encouragement with Jesus after his resurrection. So come on, let's prepare our hearts for that and worship together. Remember those walls that we call sin and shame They were like prison 
reasons that we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose Those walls are rubble now Remember those giants we call dead and gray They were like mountains that stood in our way But he came and he died and he rose Those giants are dead now
Every day gets better when I'm walking with you Have you ever smelt like smoke? You know when you, you go somewhere uh, and there's a fire pit there and, and even if you're only there for a short time, that like sticky smoke smell, it just like sticks to your clothes and you know the next day you wake up and you go to your cupboard and you, you can't even escape it there. Whatever clothes you were smelt like they were, they might as well have been like on top of the ash pile all night. <laughs> or if you've got long hair, that like harsh smoke smell can even get trapped onto your head like some inescapable smoke flavored hat or something. It was, uh, <laughs> there was a guy a few thousand years ago who knew what that was like. Uh, his name was Simon Peter. He was a fisherman and Jesus asked him to become one of his followers and he did. We're going to be talking about him today. Uh, when Jesus first meets Simon, Jesus changed his name from Simon, which means listening, into Peter, which means rock. And this name change came with a call on Peter's life to be a strong like, rock foundation uh, of the church. And he went on to become a significant early church leader. Uh, he ended up being killed because of his faith later in his life. Uh, Peter has this magnificent story, but it's the start and end of his time with Jesus that I find really beautiful. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. Let me paint a picture of Peter's first encount encounter with Jesus. So Jesus is uh, walking along a lake and there's a whole bunch of people who want to hear what Jesus has to say, uh, want to hear him talk about God. Uh, but it's hard, like back then they didn't have microphones and things. So it's hard for a, a voice to carry into a crowd, especially if you're just surrounded by people. Uh, it's only the people in your vicinity that can talk without you really straining your voice for a message. So uh, he sees, Jesus sees some, some boats on the shore uh, and there's some fishermen there uh, and they're cleaning up their nets after a day out. Uh, and he gets into one of those boats and says to Simon, says to Simon Peter, to, you know, can push me out into the water a little bit uh, where, and he's going to teach people from there where the crowd can all see him and they can all hear him because his voice carries across the water. So Jesus then does his message on the water. Um, you know, Peter's probably sitting there going like, yeah, good stuff, just a little bit out. Um, and he finished, Jesus finishes his message. Uh, and I'll read this next bit because it's fantastic. It says, uh, when he had finished speaking, Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, uh, push out into deep water, let down your nets for some fish. And Simon said to him, uh, teacher, we've worked all night and we've caught nothing. But because you told me to, I'll let the net down. Like, this is a really human moment when I was reading this. Simon Peter would be thinking like, okay, Jesus, like you've done a pretty good job like chatting to that crowd. You're obviously a good teacher, a good preacher. Like, you know, your, you know your Bible pretty well. Like, but mate, I've been fishing my whole life. Like stick to your zone. 
you know? <laughs> I can imagine Peter going like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll humor you. I'll put the net down because the, you know, you've asked me to. That I've just cleaned. We just saw him cleaning the net. <laughs> anyway, I just think that's really funny. But he, he does humor him. He does do this. Um, and it says, then when they had done this, they caught so many fish, their nets started to break. They called to their friends working in the other boat to come and help them. They came and both boats were so full of fish, they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he got down at the feet of Jesus and he said, go away from me, Lord, because I am a sinful man. Wow. But that, that, that's an incredible attitude shift. Like this, Simon Peter knew that this guy then and there was the real deal. And his instinct was to try to separate himself from Jesus because he didn't feel like he was worthy enough to be with him. It's a far cry from the, you know, I know how to fish. Uh, like, but what a, what a powerful image there. And Jesus uh, then goes on to say that Simon Peter will fish for people and, and he calls him to be his follower. And he does. Uh, those guys in the other boat who helped with, like bring in all of those fish in that story, uh, Jesus also called them to follow him uh, and they pulled their boats onto the shore and all of them left everything and they followed Jesus. It's a really cool story. Uh, and from there, they did all sorts of miracles um, and all sorts of non-miracles like all throughout the story. They healed people, they ate with Jesus, they raised people from the dead, and they hung out and chatted at his house. They ate with Jesus. They, the disciples ate their way through the Bibles. They did a lot of eating. They traveled places, and they, they did all sorts of wonder, wonderful things. And um, th there's a story in there where the disciples are with Jesus after a miracle where they feed 5,000 people with a few loaves of bread and some fish. And Jesus then, after they've done this miracle, he insists, uh, you, you go off into the next town uh, by a boat across this lake because uh, I'm going to go and get some alone time in prayer. And he insists because he's like, you, know, you, should, you should come with us. And he says, no, no, you, you go. So they all leave on the boat. Jesus goes up onto the mountain, has some prayer time, and they've all left. Then about 3 a.m., it's stormy. The disciples are struggling to row this boat. Uh, row the boat, and it says, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. He intended to go past them, but when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking that he was a ghost. Let's pause there a second. He intended to go past them? <laughs> who, who is this guy? He's doing one of the craziest things I've ever heard, walking on water. And he was just trying to pull a little sneaky one onto the disciples to surprise them when they got to the other side and be like, oh, I beat you here. And just, that is hilarious. I, I can imagine the little, the little wave he gave them. <laughs> you know, followed by, he then said, you know, don't be afraid. He said, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith. Jesus said, why do you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God. Incredible, incredible story. Uh, and it's just crazy how he goes from so much faith in that moment of stepping out of the boat and walking and then seeing a miracle like in the flesh and then in the midst of that still doubting. And it's this, this interplay between faith and doubt that Peter has. It's this tension between the two. Uh, and he wrestles with this. Um, and e even after this encounter, he goes on to, to wrestle with this more. We, we see the, uh, the night before Jesus uh, is crucified, um, he's revealing to the disciples what's going to happen the next day. He's telling them, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to die. And, uh, you know, Peter obviously doesn't want this. And, and Peter says, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But Jesus said, like, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. That would be hard to hear. And we, we get the feeling here that, that Peter really wants to give Jesus 
everything that he has. But he just sort of keeps coming up short. And, and sure enough, later that night, Jesus is, is arrested. Uh, and I want you to pay attention to where Peter ends up physically in, in this next part of the story. It says, Peter followed at a distance. The, the guards lit a fire in the middle of a courtyard and sat around it. And Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, he said, this man, you know, this was a follower of Jesus. And Peter denied that he said, woman, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. And he says, no, I'm not. Um, after an hour later, someone else said, this, this must be one of his, the disciples of Jesus. He, he's a Galilean. Peter said, man, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And at that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed before Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you'll deny me three times. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. Can't imagine the look in Jesus' eyes. You know, that moment right after he's betrayed him. And the, the, the guilt he must have felt and the shame would have been tragic. Um, you know, Peter loves Jesus, but his fear, like it had before, had him sinking. And I can't imagine how shameful and guilty he must have felt, like looking into the eyes of Jesus after those three betrayals, standing there around the fire, you know, for all three of them. He would have had this thick smoke scent that stuck to his clothes, that smoke that we talked about earlier, this inescapable smell that he would just associate with just fear and betrayal and shame. But thankfully, this, this isn't the last time that Peter looks into the eyes of Jesus. After Jesus died on the cross, he, he came back to life after three days. And in the process, uh, he offered all of us forgiveness. And Peter meets Jesus uh, after he was resurrected in a place that would have been all too familiar. It's the same place that they first met. I told you this was a really beautiful story. Now, uh, remember when they first met, Jesus took them out on a boat after a day of catching nothing and got them to reluctantly cast out the nets out, haul the biggest ever catch. And, uh, you know, Peter says, go away. I'm a sinful man. You know, don't, I'm not worthy to be near you. All right, now check this out. Jesus knows what he's doing. Uh, at dawn, this is after the, he's been resurrected, Jesus was standing on a beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. Zara in the boat fishing. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? Like, no, they replied. He said, oh, I'll throw your net on the right-hand side of the boat and you'll get some. It's not, and then, <laughs> Surely Peter would be thinking like, what's with random guys telling fishermen how to fish around here? It's not like, like throwing the net a meter out the other way is going to make much of a difference because you know, we're catching nothing. But, you know, I've been wrong before. <laughs> anyway, so they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. It's a familiar story. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he took it off for work, and jumped into the water and headed for shore. Wow. Wow. This is a far cry from when Peter first met Jesus. At first time, Peter felt like a sinner who needed to distance himself from the goodness of God. And now, after spending time with Jesus, after getting to know what Jesus was about, he was a sinner with the smell of betrayal and shame all over his clothes from a few days earlier. And he knew, But now, he knew that being close to Jesus Christ was the only way he could get that stench out. And the last time Peter jumped out of the boat, he ended up sinking. And this time, Peter was swimming towards his saviour. You know, like, forget doubt. Like he knew where redemption was and he wanted it. You know, the, the, the other guys chased him in the boat for a hundred yards. Uh, and when they finally reached Peter and Jesus, it goes on to say, the, the others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore uh, for they were only a hundred yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Oof. The last time Peter looked Jesus in the eyes, 
was when he was standing around a fire uh, and he just betrayed him three times. Uh, and then he ran off weeping. And you know, with the familiar smell of smoke in the air by that lake, uh, Jesus can smell that smoke of betrayal on him. And, in, and he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? I think that's one of the most painful verses I can read. Like Jesus calls him Simon, his old name. When they first met, he called him, you're going to be called Peter, the rock of my church. And then in this moment, he says, like, almost, it's almost as if he's saying, like, you know, Simon. It's almost like underneath that is like, you know, you were supposed to be the rock of my church. And in my darkest hour, you turned your back from me. Ouch, just that word, just calling him Simon would have stung. And he asks him, do you love me? Oh, what a confronting question. What a challenging moment. What a challenging moment. But, you know, of course, uh, Simon Peter says, Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know how I love you. And, he's, and Jesus says, you feed my lambs. Jesus repeats the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He asks, you know, do you really love me? Yes, Lord, Peter says, you know that I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus says. Third time he asks, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And each word in the Greek for love here is different. It's a different type of love. Like you're digging deeper. Like, do you really love me, Simon? Do you really love me, Peter? And Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. Uh, and he said, Lord, you know, you know everything. You know that I love you. It's like, I know that you're God. I know that you can see my heart. I know that you know that I love you so much. Like, ah, uh, like, why are you asking me? And he would have realized, like, you know, Jesus says, then feed my sheep. But realizing like, ah, oh, it's not about Jesus needing to know if I love him. It's Jesus reminding him that I love him, but that comes with a call to feed his sheep. It comes a call to be Peter, and to be the rock of his church. Wow. Incredible, incredible story. Just as Peter betrayed Jesus three times, Jesus allows Peter to get forgiveness for his betrayal with those three questions. Each time linking Peter's, I love you to affirm, then do what I've called you to do, feed my sheep. Similar to that first time with it, where Jesus says, you will fish for people. Now Jesus calls him to feed my sheep. Now, and this is all around that fire. What a beautiful image. You know, Jesus took that smoky smell of betrayal and shame, and he replaced it with a different reminder that stuck to his clothes. And that was one of forgiveness and love and purpose. You know, Peter didn't sit on his hands. Uh, he, he went on to spread the news of Jesus all over the place. Uh, and he was a significant leader in the early church and uh, he didn't betray Jesus again. And instead, he took that new fragrance of forgiveness and calling and he did everything he could to bring the goodness of heaven to people around him. Uh, church, we are called to action. Uh, you know, what is it that God has called you to? Is it sharing Jesus with your friends and family? Is it serving on a, on a team? Is it generosity to your church or to missions? Um, is it starting to lead a small group, a life group? Um, is it helping the homeless? Uh, is it turning up and staying back later at church to intentionally find and talk to people that are new? Is it meeting your neighbours for the first time after 15 years? Uh, is it chat to chat to the pastors of, about a passion for church planting is it getting a mentor to find out what your next up like steps are to develop your character like there's so many new things there's so many things that you can do like what's stirring in your soul like what what are your gifts like what gives you this holy discontentment that you know you need to put into action like church is more than just turning up on a sunday uh it's what it's walking with jesus like what do, you, what do you smell like as well? Like if you've accepted the forgiveness of Jesus, you are his church. And Jesus doesn't care if you're 9 or 99. You are useful, you are valuable, and you are a worthy partner in his church. And he has chosen you to be used to bring the goodness of heaven to this earth. What do your clothes smell like? What is stuck to them? Is it fear? 
Is it guilt? Is it shame? You, you are forgiven. You are worthy. You are the church and God will use you. Does it smell like brokenness or do you feel worthless? Is your life filled with mistakes and failures? But you are forgiven. You are worthy. You are the church and God will use you. You have anxiety. Does it smell like anxiety? Does it smell like depression or loneliness, hurt? Does it smell like fear? Have you lost hope? You are forgiven. You are worthy. You are the church and God will use you. Is it, does your clothes smell like you've been underestimated or do you feel like you don't have a purpose? You, you are forgiven. You are worthy. You are the church and God will use you. What do your clothes smell like? Whatever smell has been lingering in your life, church, stand around the fire with Jesus this morning. Lean in and replace it with an aroma of forgiveness and hope and inner healing that only Jesus can give. And let that scent linger and remind you that he has chosen to use you to bring the goodness of heaven to this earth. He wants to walk with you and partner with you. Let's pray this morning. Jesus, we love you. We love you. And we love you. Help us to be faithful through our doubts. Forgive us and help us to be brave enough to be used by you. Lead the way because we are all yours. Replace our smells with your forgiveness. You are a good, good God and we love you so much. Amen. And your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. That's it, come on. All thrones, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. Let's sing that again. Your name is the highest. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and all thrones and dominions. All powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. Your name and your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. Sing a thousand generations, a thousand generations falling down in worship. To sing the song of ages to the man. Come on, that's us. That's it. Sing it out. And all have gone before us. And all the will believe. We'll sing the song of ages to the man. Because hmm. your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name.
so great. Mm. I love the image of the fire and how the smoke reminded him of shame. Mm. But in true Jesus style, he redeems that. Yeah. And now instead of being reminded of the shame, he's reminded of forgiveness. Yes. So good. And that reminds me of that other story in the Bible mm. of Daniel's men. Yeah. How they were bound and thrown in the fire because they refused to worship anyone other than God. Mm. But it says that they survived and not only had they survived the fire, but only the ropes that bound them were burnt. Wow. And it says, there was not even a smell of smoke on them. Mm. Love how Jesus can change things for us like that. Mm. Take what was meant to hurt or harm and yeah. make it into a story of deliverance. Me too. That's so. amazing, Danny. I love that. What a Sunday. We mm. will see you next Sunday, 10 a.m. for Church at Home. See you then. Bye. When I look back, I can see your hand of love on my past. Even in the times I'd rather forget. I just can't believe you'd love me like that, love me like that. You never let go. Thought I was alone, now I know you were close. I can see it now, you were bringing me home. I just can't believe you'd love me like that, love me like that. Oh, every day you get. Yeah, she never left